Hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, using zero to attack uh, zero knowledge proof. So, you know, like a lot of people come to the zero knowledge proof talk, and then, you know, after the talk, you learn zero. Uh, they don't know anything about um, uh, what the speaker was talking about. So, so, so my goal is pretty simple. Um, you know, like after the talk, you will learn non-zero knowledge. And uh, the second goal was to have some fun uh, with the number zero. So, you know, like in the last few years, uh, th there are a lot of algorithms uh, in zero knowledge proof and they are deployed in multiple uh, blockchains. And uh, the development was so fast that uh, they use a lot of technologies that, you know, like just, just to explain the basic tech a semester. Um, so that's the reason why uh, I, in this talk, I just try to, to give you a very informal um, techniques and ideas so that you can learn about zero knowledge proof uh, yourself uh, later. Um, so, you know, but, um, <clears throat> But I hope that you you uh, you can see you know some basic and fundamental um, fundamental idea in zero knowledge proof. Okay, so the, and then I will talk about like how the, the theories uh, guide the attack directions, and later on uh, I, I I will explain like why the attack work in in practice. Okay, so so I I will have to explain to you a lot of a lot of you know basic concept, and uh, so I will go pretty fast. But the 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 main thing is we will not try to understand in depth. Instead, we'll try to understand the intuition between different concepts, so that you know when we read complicated or complex paper, we have a better idea what's going on because you know, now it's, it's super, super complicated. So for elliptic curve, if you, you never deal with elliptic curve before, the elliptic curve is just a blue line. And then uh, in elliptic curve, there, it's very amazing that the addition operation is defined between two points. Basically, you, when you, you have two points, P and Q, you can add them together. So, the red line P and Q cut the blue line at the point R prime, and then its symmetry is the sum of P and Q. You know, and we, we don't actually need to understand how the addition work. What we actually can is the, the, the points in the elliptic curve forms a group. What it means is the addition operation is defined and it has a zero point. When you add a zero point to any point, you get back the original point. And in our elliptic curve, we will, uh, excuse me. In, in, in our elliptic curve, uh, we will choose basically choose uh, to a base point uh, that a fixed point that is defined in advance and everyone know what, what it is. And if you add that point Q time, then you get back zero. So Q is called the order of the point, okay? So one very special property of uh, zero point is whenever you multiply that point with any point, then you get back zero. And then we'll use this property in, in our attack. Next, we'll talk about pairing. You know, pairing ha has a lot of, you know, deep math and we, for the purpose of this talk, we don't really care like how uh, pairing computation work and the formal definition. What we care is, you know, like it maps uh, two points on a curve to, to a finite field or to a number. And it can may map two points on two different curves to a number as well. You know, one, one trick that I learned how to deal with uh, complicated math is to not to learn it. Instead, we just learn its property. And its property is pretty simple. It has very nice property. So if the pairing of P plus Q with R is the product of P and R and Q and R, right? And uh, the pairing of A, 
AP and BQ equals to the pairing of P and Q uh, to, 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 to the power of uh, a, a times B. So if you look at the, the top line, what you see is we can basically move the coefficient A, B around when we can move it to the exponent, we can move it to the first component, or we can move it, uh, split it them in two different ways. So one nice property about pairing that we actually use in the, in the Plong protocol is it helps check in multiplication relations. And then we'll come back to that later. Uh, before moving on, one very special property of pairing is when you pair zero points with any point, you get back one. And, and we will use this observation uh, again in, in the attack section. Um, you know, like now I will introduce a little bit more about zero knowledge proof. So it, it zero knowledge proof has a lot of termino terminologies, maybe jargon as well. And, and to explain them, there, there are basically two ways to explain them. One is you start with some definition, formal definition, and, and, and then try to give some, you know, examples. I, I would prefer going from the concrete example first try to see like what's going on, understand the core and basic protocol, and then, uh, and then use that as framework to understand the general definitions and, and how things work. So, so let's start with this very simple protocol, it's called SNAR protocol. Um, this, 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 this plays a very important role in SNAR signature and with digital signature. So, so, so it, it's, it's really, really important. And it, it serves the basic for many later protocols. Uh, so this is the problem, right? The, the prover and the verifier talks with each other. The prover has the private key, small w, and it has a public key, uh, a big uh, w. And the, the prover wants to, to convince the verifier that it knows the private key without revealing any information about the private key, right? It's, it sounds right, amazing, right? You convince someone that you know something without actually revealing it, right? And, and, and this that kind of like the magic of uh, zero knowledge proof. And in this protocol, uh, it basically consists of three steps. And uh, the first one is the, the prover generate a random R, a small R, and, and, and it will send R times G to the verifier. The, ver the, the verifier will generate a random C, and then it will, it will send it to the prover. The, the prover compute Z equals to R plus C times W, and send Z to the verifier, okay? Um, before moving on, one note is, you know, my goal is, you know, to uh, to talk about a basic and, and because th this talk is kind of like math heavy. So if you can understand around like 25% of the talk in the first time, that's already a success. So uh, the slide will be uploaded to, so that you can watch it later. Um, so, so, you know, the verifier checks some, some equation, right? Z times G equals to R plus C times W. And, and, you know, if you write it down, uh, if the prover and the verifier are honest, then, you know, the equation is satisfied. There, there's nothing uh, special about this. The, 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 the special thing happens somewhere else. So the first thing first, you know, um, why does the prover doesn't leak anything about the private key uh, W, right? So, so this this um, this protocol used a very common trick in zero knowledge proof. Basically, it is it use the masking technique. Uh, it's very simple, right? To to hide a number, you just generate another number, random another number, and add them together, and you you send the, the addition. Uh, you send the sum. Right. So in this case, because C times W is uh, is related to private key, right? So the the prover want to hide that value. So it re it generate a random number R. So because R is random, no matter what C times W is, the sum is random, 
So that's why you see like in the first step, it generate a random R. It go to mask out what C times W. So basically this protocol, you know, like doesn't leak any information about the private key W. Uh, the hard part is how is the verify, verifier convinced that the, the prover knows W? And, and this, is, this, is, this is one of the most uh, confusing definition in, in zero knowledge proof. The if it's the first time you deal with it, uh, you will see that, oh, it is very strange. So, so I will go a little bit slow on this. So think about the prover is a, is a process in computer, right? So if, if the verifier communicate and interact with the prover and process, and somehow, you know, by, you know, torturing the prover or access to uh, do random stuff or, you know, clone it, whatever, as long as in the end, the verifier can extract the private key, then the verifier is convinced that the prover must have known the private key, right? Otherwise, where does the private key come from? So if the proof prover doesn't know the private key, then no matter what the verifier does, it can extract the private key, right? Because it doesn't exist in the approval process. So the in 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 practice or in reality, what they do is they 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 ask the prover to keep to keep the random R unchanged, and then the verifier will send two different values, C and C prime. And then the, the, the prover will do the same thing, you know, compute Z equal to R plus uh, WC and Z prime equal to R plus WC prime. And if you write down the equations and then you can see that it's, it's very easy to compute W. It's actually equal to Z minus Z prime, Z prime divided by C minus C prime. So it means that there is a way for the verify extract the the prover by interacting with it, right? So now the verifier is convinced that the prover actually know uh, the private key. Okay, so you know the the protocol that I describe is interactive, right? But in practice, you know, interactive protocol has a few drawbacks. First of all, it requires the prover and the verifier to be synchronized, and second of all, second, you know, air, mm, it only happens with one prover and one verifier. In practice, you want to create a proof and then multiple verifier will verify later at any time they want. So, so what we actually want is a non-interactive protocol. Uh, but how do, how do we transform from an interactive one to a non-interactive protocol? And the, the procedure that helps us achieving that goal is called Fiat Shamir Transform. And you will hear this word a lot, like in any protocol in zero knowledge proof, you will hear the word, okay, let's use Fiat Shamir Transform. What it means is just uh, a known procedure to transform an interactive protocol to a non-interactive one. And it's actually pretty simple. So instead of the verifier send the random C to the prover, the prover just compute C its, itself using hash function. It has everything in the public domain and everything in the public communication with, between the prover and the verifier. And the, the hash function has some property uh, that you know, allows us uh, the prover so that the prover cannot control C because if the prover changes the input, then the, the prover can't control the output. So basically, if the, the prover can't control the input and the output at the same time, and you know that property is kind called random oracle model. We're not going to discuss this, but what we've learned is, okay, we can compute the hash of the transcript, basically the public input of everything. And then that it will be the challenge from the verifier to the prover. And it's called Fiat-Shamir Transform. Okay, so now we learn a concrete protocol. Now I will show you 
uh, the general terminology that you will, that hopefully you will understand more when you read uh, papers in zero knowledge proof. So in, in cryptography, instead of using the word proof, we use the word argument. So argument just mean that, you know, the protocol is secure based on computational assumption, for instance, the hardness of uh, the street lock problem. And um, in general, um, the, the prover wants to convince the verifier that certain statement is true. For instance, the f of uh, x uh, and w equals to y, where x is the public input, uh, w is the private input or the witness, and y is the supposed uh, public uh, output. Uh, in our, our protocol, you know, we have x is empty and w is w and the function f of x and w is equal to w times g and the proof is just uh, r and z okay so so if the prover convinced the verifier that it knows w then we say that is an argument of knowledge I, I'm, I'm just saying the same thing but in in more general term okay so and if the verifier only learns that the statement is correct without learning any information about the witness, then we call it zero knowledge, okay? And uh, there, there will be more, a few more terminology. NARC stands for non-interactive argument of knowledge. And SNARC is succinct NARC. It's it exactly the same as NARC, but it's, the proof is short and sometimes there's some requirement for the verifier to, to be fast. And ZK snark is zero knowledge snark. Now we will talk about a snack software system. You know, like the, for nowadays zero knowledge proof can, uh, can prove arbitrary computations. So it's not just, you know, concrete statement like, uh, like snark protocol, it can prove arbitrary uh, statement. So it, it's fairly complicated. It, co it consists of multiple systems. So you can write zero knowledge proof in a high level program language. And then there will be a compiler that compiles this to arithmetic circuit. And then there's some transformation to polynomial. And then the SNARK uh, or ZK SNARK will work on polynomial equations. So you're not supposed to understand anything on this slide. The only important thing that that you should remember in this slide is it first transformed to polynomials. And polynomial is, is the most important thing in the modern technology of zero knowledge proof. In basically every single zero knowledge proof, you have to deal with polynomials. And it's, it's the solution to all the things is also polynomials. You deal with it all the time. And it's very amazing. Like, why such a simple thing like polynomial is such powerful that it, it helps so all kinds of issues in, in zero knowledge proof. Okay, I will talk briefly about circuit a little bit so, so that it will help you um, understand the paper uh, when, when you read it uh, yourself. So basically, you know, like the circuit is, in our case, we have only uh, two, two gate, two kind of gates, the multiplication and addition. So basically, if uh, you know, like multiplication and, and addition is enough to to for arbitrary is Turing complete. It means that you can do all kind of op, uh, operation just using uh, addition and, and multiplications. So um, the multiplication is called a gate. It has two input: the left input, the right input, and then it has an output, right? And it has a constant. You can write it. Okay, the the output equals to the the left uh, multiplied by, uh, by the right, and and that's it. that's a constant. Um, but if you pay attention there, if you look at the the figure on the left hand side, you can see that the 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 left input of the multiplication gate equals to the left input of the addition gate, right? So, it's, and this is called a copy constraint. It's a different kind of constraint that we have to enforce using polynomial. All right. So we, we've learned, I hope that um, you, you will remember that polynomial is the most important thing 
in general knowledge proof. So now I will tell you a few, a few terminology and few polynomial tricks uh, that will help you read other papers as well. So uh, let's talk about poly polynomial commitment. Assuming that you have uh, some polynomial P, P of X. Uh, so in many uh, ZKP or SNARK, uh, it, the protocol often consists of a few phases. The first phase is often commitment. Basically commit just mean that, you know, like you have some value, uh, you commit to it so that later on you can't change this, right? It's combining that that property property that you can't change later is combining, but it also has another property called hiding in the sense that the commitment doesn't reveal of the value that you committed. Okay, and in in the special case of polynomial commitment, then we we don't commit to a value, we commit to a polynomial, and then in the in the later phase, uh, you will have a proof uh, such that the the evaluation of the protocol at z equals to y. Okay, that's 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 called polynomial commitment. And then there is uh, some cool properties um, in polynomial that that is used all the time in 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 Z, zkp. Uh, so let's say you have a polynomial over a finite field. For for people who don't know what finite field is, finite field you can think of it is mod modulo a prime number, and uh, a polynomial of the degree d has at most d root, right? It doesn't have more than d root. That, that's very basic uh, uh, in, in a math book. Um, and typically, you know, when people are talking about, you know, two polynomials equal to each other, then basically, you know, their, their difference is zero, right? It's the same thing, just different language, okay? Um, but you know, like how 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 can the the prover convince the verifier that two polynomials equal to each other by using only one challenge from the verifier? So the way it works is the verifier, you know, send a random z uh, to the prover, and if the verifier is convinced that uh, p of z equal to zero, then then the verifier knows that f of x equal to g of x with high probability. Uh, why? Because, you know, the, the polynomial P of X has at most D root. And if you send a, a, a very huge number Z, the chance that Z is one of the root is negligible, right? So, so if, if the evaluation of that polynomial equals to zero, then the, the verifier is convinced that, oh, it's likely that two polynomial equal everywhere. Okay, another trick is, you know, is, is this. So the, the difference between P of X and P of Z is divisible by X minus Z. What it means is there is another polynomial uh, H of X, such that uh, H of X times X minus Z equal to P of X uh, minus uh, P of Z. And, and you know, here, here, I will give you a hint here that, you know, to check the multiplication relations, uh, uh, H of X times X minus Z equal to P of X minus P of Z, we can use pairing. So that's exactly the reason why uh, pairing is used. It's used to check the multiplication relations. Okay. So now, now I can talk about the protocol itself, but I, I won't go into detail. The, the protocol is very, very complicated. So the, the plong is just a name of the protocol and it actually is zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. It use Fiat-Shamir transform to transfer, uh, to transform not uh, interactive protocol to a non-interactive one. And it has pairing and it use polynomial commitment Basically, it used everything that I've just described, but the detail is, is, is complicated because you know it has a lot of optimization uh, so that it can be deployed in practice and it uses a lot of tricks as well. Uh, so I, I won't have time to describe it here. Okay. Um, so, so in the Plunk, um, one special notation is it, it, it used pairing, but the pairing actually maps two points 
in two elliptic curves to a finite field. And let's say G1 is the, the base point of the first curve and G2 is the base point of the second curve. And plong your special notation, basically X bracket one equals to X times G1 and X bracket two equal to X times G2, okay? So, you know, as a security engineer, when we look at this, you know, the first thing we think, oh, how can I manipulate this, right? So basically the, the, the X, given X times G1, the attacker doesn't know X because they, it has to break a discrete lock problem, but the attacker can manipulate its value. It, it can modify, it can modify that value. And we will use this observation in the attack as well. Okay, so here, here is the Planck verifier. You know, look at uh, equations. Yeah, I, I just, just give you the last equation, but there are a lot of symbols here, right? It, it looks scary. And basically it, it compute a pairing, two pairings, and it check whether the result equals to one. And, you know, as an attacker, you know, when we look at this, the first question is, hey, which parameters that attacker can manipulate? And which, what is the least effort to ma manipulate parameters, right? Because, yeah, we are lazy. We don't want to spend all day, you know, uh, or attack a very difficult point. We want to find the weakest point. Um, so let me give you a little bit brief the uh, description of, of the attacker thoughts, you know, like from the theor theoretical point of view. So, so from, from, from the formulas, then, you know, like WZ and WZ omega are under attacker control. So, but the attacker doesn't know the, the value, but the attacker can modify it. Yeah. So we can use that observation later. And U is the, 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 the hash of the transcript. So it's basically the fiasco mu transform. So it, it's outside of attacker control. It basically, um, the attacker can't do anything about it. Well, if, if there's some bug in the fiasco mu transform, then yes, but in general, no. Uh, X is a secret that no one knows. Uh, in our case, that e even the prover and the verifier doesn't know what X is. And F and E, you know, is computed by a verifier by in a very complicated process. So, so we ignore it. It's complicated. We don't care. We only want to attack the weakest point. Okay. So W Z and W Z omega are natural attack targets. Okay. Uh, you know, to to simpl simplify the notation, I just denote P one as the first component of the first pairing. P zero is the first component of the second pairing. And then we want to check the, the, the product of two pairing equals to one. Okay, so now is the attack. So the attack is pretty simple. You know, the, the hardest part of this talk to, is to understand the protocol. The attack by itself is not complicated at all. So what I did was to you, you know, like let's try, um, WZ equal to zero and w, uh, WZ omega equals to zero. So basically, and then, you know, P1 equal to zero plus U times zero, it equals zero, right? So what it means is we neutralize the row of Fiat-Shamir transform. So U doesn't mean anything anymore. We will have, we will always have P1 equals to zero. And that's amazing, right? Because, you know, Malik, Pleading uh, fiasco mu transform is pretty difficult, but with zero points, we get zero. It, it's, it's, it's simple. And then, you know, the pairing of P1 with X is one because the pairing of zero with anything is, is one, okay? But if you plug in um, P0, you will see that, oh, we simplified it. You know, we, we simplify it. Uh, and then the, the end result is F1 minus E, but it's not, it's not zero, unfortunately, yeah? So the pairing is not one, so the equation doesn't hold, right? So, okay, so the question is, does the attack work? And the answer, no, it doesn't work. In theory only, in practice, is a different story, okay? So in practice, um, you know, when I look at this, uh, I, I, you know, 
I think that theory is cool, but I don't really believe in theory, right? Uh, I have to try it out. So I just send zero, zero to the verifier and see what happens. And the verifier compute the products up to pairing and it's one and they accept the proof. It is, is amazing. I, I was so surprised. And then, you know, like um, before talking about why it happened, I want to talk about the consequence first. So the consequence is the proof can fox proof for any incorrect statement. That, that's, that's really critical. The second consequence is even if the prover doesn't know anything about the private or the, the witness, uh, the, the verifier is convinced that the prover actually knows the witness. Yeah. So, so, so this, this, this attack is devastating. Basically, it, it caused the zero, zero knowledge proof becomes useless. Okay. So when, when I dig into it, uh, I, I found out that it, it actually falls through a chain of perfectly aligned software cracks that I never seen in my life. Although I, I, I've been doing you know, crypto analysis for a long time. And uh, I, I, I will show you like how it actually works. Uh, before I continue, I have to, to talk a little bit about, you know, different, a little bit more details on implementation because now we're talking about code vulnerabilities. So, you know, like the first one is uh, on elliptic curve, um, point has different representation depends on, uh, on, on at, at what stage you're processing it. So, you know, the, 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 the first one is by array, right? When you send a point on, on the wire or store it, it's just by array. And, you know, in some other, when you actually process this, then it may be in the I find, I find coordinate. Basically it had the X and Y coordinate, but sometimes, you know, for optimization purpose, people actually use projective coordinate. And uh, in it had X, Y, and Z. Um, okay. So the attack. So what 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 is the attack uh, in, in in a concrete term? So what I did was really simple. I I actually it's not a really infinity point or anything. I actually sent a zero byte. So everything is zero. There there is no encoding or anything. It's just zero byte. I just I just zero out the whole array and send it to the verifier, and the verifier accepted but the root cause is, is fairly complicated. Okay, so the first, the first, the first vulnerabilities, right? So the first thing the verifier always does is to check whether the point is on the curve is kind of like basic stuff. And then the, this zero point doesn't satisfy any equation. So it's not on the curve. But the, the, the amazing thing is the verifier doesn't stop immediately. It only excluded in some computations, but it includes it in the final computation which has pairing with the allows the attack to work. So, you know, if the verifier stopped immediately, the attack would fail, but it doesn't stop, okay? The second uh, vulnerability is, you know, like on elliptic curve, the author of the code actually knows the danger of the infinity point. So the code actually check uh, where the, the point is infinitive, right? They, 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 they have to check. So, but the way it check whether it's infinitive, it check the most significant bit of the point. But in our input, the most significant bit is zero. So it's not infinitive. So it bypass the, the infinity check. Okay. So, and then, you know, like in, in some computation on elliptical, you have to do uh, division as well uh, in the finite field as well. And, and you know, like, Basically, uh, the, the inverse of the zero mod P shouldn't exist, right? It, it, in theory, it doesn't exist because uh, the inverse by of X by definition is Y such that X times Y equal one uh, mod P, but there's no such Y so that uh, Y times zero equals one mod P. Um, but, you know, like also like the court use uh, for my little theorem Basically, uh, to compute the inverse of x, it, it raised to the power of p minus one uh, mod p. 
And uh, if the code is zero, then zero to the P minus one actually is actually zero. So the inverse of zero is zero. So 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 the the, the code doesn't say that oh it's wrong or anything. It just it's to compute the inverse of zero and and it output zero and it's fine. It continues the computation. There is no exception. Uh, furthermore, you know, like um, in, in some of the steps, um, you know, sometimes you are in affine coordinate, and other time you are in projective coordinate. So they 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 you bash normalize, and here it has another bug that it turns if one of the points is zero, then it will turn the whole array to become zero, and we will show you this is this is the the the, the code example. So if you look at this, the, the point P0 is not zero. P1 is zero. But after batch normalization, everything becomes zero, right? And, and, and what it means is uh, in the end, you have P1 and P, P0 is zero. Here's the amazing thing. Uh, P1 is, is not on a curve and is not infinitive. So the, by, by definition, the pairing shouldn't equal to one, but the code, the pairing code actually computed and it equals to one. So, so that it bypassed everything. So, so you know, like the, the, the attack is so simple that I don't even bother to do a demo because you just zero out the array and then the verifier just accept everything. Um, thanks for your uh, attentions. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.